Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a new ZBrush tutorial. There are two ways we can sculpt something in ZBrush. We can either bring a model into from Maya into ZBrush or the other way around. We can actually model it in ZBrush and then bring it into Maya. I'm actually going to be showing you both ways in this video tutorial. We're going to be covering how to bring in a model from Maya into ZBrush and learn some of the fundamental brushes and we're, it's going to look really cool. And then in the next one, I'll show you the other way around where we actually model in ZBrush and bring it into, Z, into Maya. Either way works. One is not better than the other. Uh, it's really up to you and how you want to work on your pipeline. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this one. Uh, this model is already complete. If you take a look at the UVs, they're also already done. It's on this window. Here we go. So the UVs are done which is good because what I want to do is take this model and then bring it into ZBrush to detail it. And then I'm going to bring it into Substance Painter and texture it plus bake it. So it's the whole pipeline and it's very exciting. So I can't wait to show you. All right, so let's get started by exporting this into ZBrush. The first thing I like to do is just make sure you select, uh, select your model. Go ahead and delete the history of resource transformations. And let's go to File, Export, Selection. And I'm going to be choosing OBJ. And it's up to you where you want to place it. I'm going to put it in assets and just call this my axe underscore OBJ. And that's it. Let's go ahead and bring it into ZBrush. I'm using ZBrush 2020, by the way. I probably should update, but mm, these are the basic brushes and they should all have it. All right, let's close this and the light box is going to pop up so you can hit comma on your keyboard. That will make it go away. And let's import that OBJ. So over here to the right, we have tools and I'm going to click on import. And now I have to find it. And here is my assets folder and here's my OBJ. I'm going to drag it in and click on edit. Perfect. Hit the letter F on your keyboard so you can take a look. Now I am using a Wacom tablet, so it will have pressure sensitivity. If you're using a mouse, you may not get the same details because it doesn't have pressure sensitivity, but that doesn't mean you still can't do a lot of this, the tools that I'm going to show you. The first thing I'd like to do is as much as I love this material, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on materials, click on matte cap gray, and that will turn into almost like a blend. Uh, it does have something called basic material, which is more like a Lambert. And there are plenty of other things that you guys can choose from. So if you're creating something metallic or something more like a car, like a red car, something like that, you can use those materials. But since I just want to make it look as much of a, a Maya model as possible, there we go. Now in Maya, this is separated into multiple pieces. Here, they're actually combined. So if we take a look on the right, we do have something called a subtool. And the subtool is kind of like a layer of models. So you'll notice that I have an axe OBJ and it has the full axe. If I scroll down a little bit, and again, you can kind of click this and move it up. And what we have here is split. So open up split and we are going to choose group split. Click OK. What's going to happen is that it's going to separate into multiple pieces. So if I cover these eyes, you'll notice that I can see the axe. I can also see the support system. I can see the back of the axe. And then I can also focus on the handle. This is very helpful because I get to focus on these items all together. And if I have them all on, I might accidentally select it. Now, if you want to, you can also hold down Alt and click on the pieces and those, those layers will be selected. So that's how you can select things in ZBrush. All right, so let's focus on this particular item. So what I'm going to do is hide everything else and just focus on the handle. All right, so our object is pretty low poly. As you can see, it's about 600 polygons. I'm going to go to geometry and click on divide a couple of times. Now, you know, don't go crazy. You want to kind of keep an eye on your uh, poly count, but you also want to make sure that you get enough information to be able to create details. I'm going to divide one more time to about 42. We'll see how that goes, 42,000. And let's go ahead and start focusing on the handle itself. All right, so let's say that we want to make this into bands. And over here to the right, we have a couple of brushes. And the one that I wanted to use is called a DAM standard. So here it is under DAM standard. You can click on the letter D on your keyboard and it will pop up. And DAM standard is great because it will actually create crevices. Now, as you can see, you can't see too much. And the brush is really big. So I'm going to hit the left bracket, which is going to make it smaller. I'm going to go into symmetry. So under transform, activate symmetry. You can also just click on the letter X on your keyboard and that will turn it on and off. 
So you'll note, let's see if I can find it. So you'll notice that the symmetry is not exactly where I want it. If I work on here, it doesn't do anything on the other side. So under transform, instead of using X, let's try Z. And there you go. So Z is the one that it really likes. Great. Also notice that I'm trying to create some details and it's really blocky. That's because I don't have enough geometry. So again, I'm going to divide. I'm up to 170. Thousand. One more just for the sake. All right, that should give me, there we go, some detail. Great. All right, so what I'm going to use with the damn standard is I'm actually going to create bands. So this is going to be a manual, manual way of doing it. Now I know there's a lot of different ways you guys can create bands, but this is an introduction to ZBrush and I really just want to introduce you to, met, to the brushes. So I'm just going to go ahead using a thin brush go in and create some bands for your axe. So I'm just kind of going through, and again, I'm using a tablet, so I might make it a little bit easier. Cool, and just kind of cross, just kind of make sure that you've got some nice texture here. Probably should make my bands a little bigger, because otherwise it's gonna take a while. But take your time and just kind of get comfortable with the damn standard. It's going to give you some really nice information on the bands. So let's go this way. Very nice. All right, cool. Getting there, getting closer to the bottom. Oops, got a little too excited there. Undo, Control Z, my favorite tool. My favorite tool in just about every software that includes Maya, ZBrush, so on and so forth. And there we go. All right, so let's take a look from afar. It's looking pretty good. Great. All right, so that's one brush. The other brush, I want to add a little bit more texture to this object. So I'm just kind of going through and adding a little bit more depth. The other brush I wanted to show you is actually under a regular standard brush. So just click on up here at the top, go to standard. And this time what we're going to do is use an alpha. So what I'm going to show you guys is alpha 58, which is down here. So notice that anything white appears will stand out or dig in, depending if it's an add or subtract and anything black you don't see. So that's known as an alpha. So for example, let's say I want to make some scratches and you'll notice that the scratches look really nice. I want them to be sticking inward because I want to make it look like it's made out of leather. You can hold down alt and it will give you the subtraction and I can go ahead and make some details. However, it's going to be a pain for me to just continue holding on alt. So instead you can click on up here at the top. You can click on Z sub, which is subtract. Click on that. And you can just kind of go in and start scratching it. Now, if you'll notice, it's a little bit low poly. So I'm going to divide one more time. I'm now up to 2 million. So this is pretty big for something that has a lot um, just for the handle. But that's OK. We'll be focused on things one at a time. All right, I'm just kind of going through and just kind of adding a little bit of texture. I made the brush a little bit larger so I can kind of just go in and texture it. Don't forget the back. There we go. There we go. A little more. And let's pull back a little bit. Cool. So very quickly, we can get some really nice designs on our handle. We can use the damn standard to get some etchings, and then we can use this alpha to make it look like it's made out of leather. Now, if you want to kind of sub calm this, uh, the Z intensity a little bit, you can add a little bit of extra damage to it by just kind of scratching through it. So I'm just kind of, this kind of just adds a little bit more information to the leather or to the material. So again, this is very subtle, but it's the subtleties that really add to it. If you want to, you can grab the damn standard and just kind of go in and just bring back those details that you might have lost. Now notice that I'm not really pulling this or try or use the move tool to try to pull anything out. And the reason why is because we have to keep the silhouette. One of the things about the um, about ZBrush and the way we're texturing is that I'm going to be using this as a normal map.
So it's going to help me create the details of the object, but it's not going to alter the model itself. So that's something that's really important to understand that any type of, you see how this is kind of indenting and it's changing the silhouette of the object? That's not going to happen. Uh, it won't change it unless I use a displacement map. Um, the purpose is, is, it's, it's only purpose that I want ZBrush is to give me details for my model. All right, great. There we go. What about this area right here? This I want to be made out of wood. And if I take a look at my standard surface and I look at this, I mean, we do have a couple of brushes, but what if I want to bring my own wood texture? Well, we can import one. So in alpha, click on import. And I already have some. I'm going to go into my images and I have a KD Natural 09. I did not name it. That's the brush. You'll notice that it looks a little bit like wood. So I'm going to bring up my brush by hitting my bracket, make my intensity a little stronger. And you'll notice that, I mean, looks, I clearly did too much, but I'm getting some really fun texture. Let me calm that brush a little bit. But the issue is, is that I really have this really nice texture, but I'm not really getting the details that I want. So right now I'm just trying to get the right intensity here. So what I can do instead of, you know, trying to draw there up here at the, in the center, there is this thing called a stroke. And right now we're using, we're using dots. There is another one called drag rectangle. So if I click on that and then I click and drag, I can actually get that wood texture. I can scale it so I can make it small or I can make it large. And this is going to be nice because now I can go in and create my wood texture. Now I do have symmetry on, so that's causing that weird pull. So if you click on the letter X on your keyboard, it will turn off symmetry. So now I can go in and draw the wood. So again, I'm just clicking and dragging and seeing if I need to add a little bit more. And that looks good. Maybe a little here. All right at the bottom, it's got that too. Now this one's going to be harder because it's going to be really hard for me just to get that area here. Notice that if I want that same texture as above, it kind of starts spilling over this area. Well, ZBrush has come up with something called a mask. So what I'm going to do is mask it. So a mask is very similar to Photoshop that there are things that you can manipulate versus not manipulate. So for example, let's go ahead and I'm just moving this so I can kind of face it a little bit straight. And if I hold down control, you'll notice that my icon changes to yellow. That means mask. So I can click and drag and make a selection. And it looks black and the rest looks great. So now I can try to subtract the mask by holding down control alt. So those are two buttons. That's what ZBrush is famous for is buttons and just kind of remove some of that. I will do my best. You may be asking, can you draw on this? And the answer is yes. So if I hold down control I and alt, I well, like, let me make my brush smaller. Control alt, I could paint this away. So it gives me a lot of control. Thank you, ZBrush. Maybe even add some. So I'm going to add a little bit on that mask. All right. Now I have the mask selected, but when I try to draw on it, make my brush bigger, click and drag. You'll notice that it affects the light gray. Well, you have to reverse the selection. So to reverse it, you have to hold down control and then just click in the infinity. I know this is a lot, but once you get into the habit of it, it becomes second nature, just like Maya. You just keep using it and using it, and then it'll become second nature. So hold down control, click, and then it will reverse it. Now I do not have to worry about anything. I can go ahead and make my design, draw it in there, and not worry about accidentally damaging another part of the, the model. All right, so once you're done, you can hold down control, click and drag, and that will let go of it. And now we're back to normal.
So fairly quickly, we get some really nice looking details on our ZBrush model. Now that we're done with the handle, let's go ahead and start working on the blade, which is going to be in the next tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, we learned a lot of tools in this video, including how to use the damn standard. We used alphas and importing your own textures. In the next video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to add detail to the blade use masks to create details, create some damage and so much more. So I will see you in the next video tutorial where we'll finish up this ax. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. And if you found this helpful, please like and share. That would be amazing. And if you find these videos helpful on your art and you want to tag me on your social media, I would love that. Please tag me. You can find my social media below. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and other social media. I would love to see your work. Don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can find free models like this one, free trainings, free tutorials, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and I will see you next time.